Your code is terrible. You should quit coding and start making something else. Whoa, that was offensive. But luckily, we are not at the moment when AI can threaten a human. And today, I will show how we can use ChatGPT to speed up the development process. I've created a plugin for JetBrains IDEs like Android Studio, IntelliJ ID, WebStorm, PHP Storm, PyCharm, CLion, and others. The AskGPT plugin is available in the JetBrains plugin marketplace for free. Let's explore its capabilities first and then you can decide if you want to try it or not. I will go through different languages such as JavaScript, Kotlin, Python, and Java and show you some benefits of using AI tools. Let's start with JavaScript and the web store. Imagine that we need to create a Node.js web server using the Express.js library. With the AskGPT plugin, we can do it in three tiny steps. First, create a file index.js. Second, press Ctrl, Enter and select AskGPT model. Third is type in a question. Please create a Node.js web server with an Express.js library. It should listen to port 3302. And boom, the code will be in the IDE directly. I need to delete the text descriptions and non-code comments and it's ready to be used. Let's give it a try. Open a terminal and type in not index.js. And it works. We can check it by clicking on a URL. It will be opened in a system browser. Next, let's make it a bit complicated. Almost every server needs data from a database. Let's create a database.js file and use the magic plugin with the next question. Please create a Node.js code that can connect to MySQL server and has a pool of 20 connections. It should be a model and a separate file. Boom! We have code for the database. Let's clean up it again and review it. ChatGPT created code that works but can execute only one SQL query. Let's force it to make it reusable. Let's select the target code and write the next ask. Could you make a method from this code that can receive a MySQL query as an input parameter and return the results? Boom again, the code is ready. It has some flaws with new lines and comments, but we can quickly clean it up. Even at 1x speed, it took me less than a minute to clean. You didn't have enough of time to enjoy the Benny Hill song. Now we can put this method into exports and the class is almost ready to be used. It requires some database credentials, but changing it at the top of the file is not a big deal. Lastly, we can ask the plugin to add commands to this code. The same hotkey combination leads us to a create document menu and ChatGPT explains the code with human-friendly commands. I bet your project doesn't have such a lot of documentation. We can continue playing this game until the web server is done. Unfortunately, we have limited time, so let's move on to Kotlin. Imagine that we have an Android application written on Kotlin and want to build communication with a server. We know that the server returns JSON and we have an example of it. JSON shows that the root object is a list and children objects has ID, type, name and even a field with a list of other objects. Let's use the AskGPT plugin to create data classes for our future API service. Call the menu and type. Could you generate data classes based on this JSON file? It should be used in the future with a Xon parser, so each field should have a serialized name annotation. In a moment we have a few data classes, let's copy them to a separate file. We still need to rename these classes to something meaningful, but the ChatGPT eliminates tedious work from your workday. Going next. Android development is almost always about UI. Sometimes all applications have identical screens, such as login form or registration. Let's ask ChatGPT. Please generate a login screen using an Android Compose library. 
It should be written in a Kotlin language and have the following UI components. Email, password, remember me, checkbox, buttons, OK and cancel. And it's time for a magic moment of fixing imports and stylings and adding a preview function for our answer. One more delay with a build and voila, the sign-in screen is ready. We can add a white background to emphasize elements, but we also can use theming to create a dark theme here. I could spend an hour on this screen, but with just GPT I made it in a minute. Of course I need to make it look according to a design, but applying a theme and branding won't take long. The last example is related to data. Imagine having an API with Swagger documentation. In Android, we use a retrofit library to make API requests. Can we generate a retrofit code from a web page? Sure, let's review this magic trick. Let's open a Swagger documentation and copy the HTML using the developers tool in Google Chrome. Yes, literally just copy it HTML with all the debris like styling and formatting. Then go back to Android Studio and ask something like Please generate a retrofit API service for Android in a Kotlin language from the next Swagger API documentation and paste the HTML there. Boom! This is awesome! We need to clean the file, however, we have a fully implemented service for a section of API. It was made from a Swagger and debris. No human could possibly do it in a moment. ChatGPT has done it in 10 seconds. That was truly amazing. We have successfully transformed HTML code into Android code. Ok, let's move on to Python. Imagine that we want to create a simple API that returns data from a user table. We have a predefined database that we can use. We will need to create an HTTP server and a database reader. Let's start from a database. We can use the AskGPT plugin with the next ask. Could you please create a Python class that can connect to the MySQL database and execute custom queries? And sure thing, the ChatGPT created it in a moment. I will remove the comments, clean up it a bit and rename this class to a database class. Going forward, we can create a file httpserver.js and ask something like, could you please create an HTTP server using a Python program language? It should have a single GET request that returns a JSON to the caller. Another moment and we have the server. I will clean up the code and try it. Additionally, I need to install a Flask library in order to run this server. So I will just run pip install Flask. Now. I can use the python3 http server.js command to run the server. We can test it by simply clicking on the URL. Yeah, I forgot that it has API data URL, so I need to add it to the address. Great, now we can see the mock data. Now let's add a database to the get method. Yep, I totally forgot about imports. And now I can select everything from the user's table. Ok, I still need to include something. And I forgot... I forgot about the credentials. I will use very secure way of storing them, just hardcoding in the file. And remember, it's just an example. Don't even try it in production. Oops, uh, there is still something wrong. Yes, I am using the wrong method. It should have the name fetch result. Let's go back to a browser and reload the page. Finally, we can see data from the database. Of course, this code is not something that you can use in production. It should be cleaned and vandalized. However, it's an example of asking something and receiving a working code. 
The request could be different. You can parse something or create some files. It doesn't matter. What matters is how fast you can receive suggestions and how you can tune your ask. Next, IntelliJ IDE and Java. Have you ever seen a snake that eats its own tail? We are going to create IntelliJ IDE plugin using IntelliJ IDE plugin. Let's start with a new project and select that it's a plugin. By default, it creates a Kotlin folder, so I'll just rename it to Java. Next, I will create a file action plugin.java and use AskGPT plugin. Let's type the ask. Could you please create an action for IntelliJ IDE plugin? It should be written on Java, it should have a menu item in tools menu. It should show a dialog with a panel and an input text field and a few button OK and cancel. The instructions should be detailed because I don't know any of that. And in 10 seconds we have these results. It contains code for different files, we just need to follow what it says. I will copy the code from the answer to a file and rename the class name to match file name and add a package name on top of it. And then we can go back to the answer and add this action to the plugin configuration file. Copy an action field from proposed code and paste it into plugin.xml. Then replace an example package name with a real one. And that's it. We can run the code. In a moment we can see a new IntelliJ IDE. We can create a new project and go to the tools menu. And there is a new menu item with the name show dialog. Let's test it. Just press on it. Ok, we see a dialog and I will just type in the word something and press ok. Cool, we have created a plugin. It literally took 5 minutes to do it. I can even go back to the studio and ask GPT, could you comment this code? I don't understand it. And in a few moments I have a detailed explanation about this class. Isn't it cool? Ok, it's time to review how to set up the AskGPT plugin. Let's start with IntelliJ IDE settings. We should open them and then we should go to a plugin tab and type in in a search field AskGPT. Then press search in marketplace and press install. Then open a tools menu and search for an AskGPT item and AskGPT settings. In the settings window we have an empty field. We need to click on the label of the field. It will lead us to the internet browser and we should be sure that we are logged into the AskGPT API and paid for the API usage. Yes, it's a paid feature and you have to pay. Press generate a new key and name it somehow. Copy it and go back to the IntelliJ IDE. Paste the key in the first field and save. Let's test it. Ctrl Enter is a short key for the menu. Let's type in something like, could you please say I am working. Great, now you can see the answer from it, which means you can use it. The AskGPT is an open source plugin. You can find a link to the repository in the description below. Let me know in the comments if you found this video or the plugin useful. And remember to stay polite with AI. You never know the future. Cheers.